Hello friends, we now move further into the poem, the sonnet, Ice and Fire, written by Edmund Spencer. This poem is a love poem, written uh, in the collection of poems called Amority. Amority, which means a compilation of love songs love songs so in this poem the poet compares his beloved with eyes and his own self with fire and he says that my love is like eyes and I'm like fire and then he questions how come it comes it then that this her cold so great is not dissolved through my so hot desire? He questions that with my such hot desire like fire, which is like fire, why does her cold, which is so great, doesn't get dissolved but harder grows the more I her and treat? So, however much I make protests of coming close to her, her eyes becomes hard. So, this is against nature. And then he says, he speaks about his own self. In the first quatrain, he praises his beloved. And now he says, how comes it? That my exceeding heat is not allayed by her heart frozen cold. And he questions why, uh, he wonders why his own heat doesn't become uh, less, doesn't diminish with her heart frozen cold. And that, and that he burns all the more in his sweat and his flames are in fact increased many fold. These two quatrains we had studied in the previous lecture that they are uh, there is an overlapping kind of rhyme scheme which is A B A B B C B C and now we study for the today's text. What more miraculous thing may be told that fire which all things melts should harden fire. The This is the third quatrain and which he begins by the submission. He says, he commits that this is miraculous. It is a miracle of rare device. And what is this miracle? What can be more miraculous? That fire, that me, my element, which melts everything else, is hardening the ice of my beloved. And ice, which is con congealed with senseless cold, should kindle fire by wonderful device. And he says that my beloved, who is like ice, and which is congealed with, congealed with means endowed with, senseless cold should kindle, kindle is encourage. How does it encourage fire by its wonderful device? So the two words, in the, the first line, the third word, and in the last line of this quatrain, the last but one word, that is wonderful miraculous and wonderful. The poet is wonderstruck and he is left with no other alternative but to commit that this love which is nourished in the being of the beloved who is ice and in the being of himself which is fire. This is a miraculous 
thing and I cannot tell anything further. This is one of the most miraculous things that fire which is capable of melting, that is capable of uh, bringing under control everything and melting it so that its form changes. My fire is hardening the ice and her, the ice of my beloved which is uh, supposed to be very senseless cold is in fact despite its coldness is encouraging the fire through a wonderful device. So we see that the poet has praised the love that exists between his ice beloved and his fire self and this he lays down with the help of questions. So this sonnet is a sonnet extraordinarily different because instead of saying the statement, saying the, the power of love with exclamation marks, he says it with question marks. He brings us out of thought and says that I cannot think of anything. Can anyone tell me anything better and more miraculous than this? That my fire doesn't melt her and her eyes only goes on to kindle my fire. And then the last two lines. Such is the power of love in gentle mind. Not the words. This poem is the celebration of power of love. He says that this is the power of love. If and what kind of love? Which exists not in bodies but in gentle mind. Any love, any feeling of love which has its origin in the mind has got the force, has got that miraculous power that even if, if it dwells in ice, it would only flare up the fire of the lover and if it dwells in the heart of the lover, then it will only Freeze the eyes further. Such is the power of love in gentle mind that it can alter, it can alter all the course of kind. Course is natural happening, natural path of kind. So the conclusion given in the couplet at the end of the poem is to actually confirm that this miracle of ice and fire staying together and yet retaining their first elements is because of the power of love in gentle mind. And he doesn't use the term gentle minds because they too the ice and fire of the beloved and the lover are as if existing in one mind. Both of them possess to possess as if a one mind. And because it is the power of love in gentle mind, it is very needed. That love should be a gentle act. It should, it should be on a plane where it is not destructive. It is gentle. And then it can alter. Then it has every likelihood. Then it has every power to alter. That is to change all the course of kind. So what is the course of kind? That ice 
should melt when it goes closer to fire and fire should get extinguished if it comes or diminish and then extinguished if it comes close to ice but this poem in this poem edmund spencer says he speaks about he very emphatically lays down the power of love in gentle mind now we look at the rhyme scheme because i told you it is intertwined interrelated fire a great b desire a and trait b now this b goes on in the second stanza heat it is like beat great great and red heat c cold d sweat c and manifold oh i'm sorry b c b c and look at the c manifold this rhymes as c which continues here told c ice d cold c device e and mind and kind are e e so this is the third variation of a sonnet the shakespearean sonnet consisted of three quatrains rhyming as a b a b c d c d second quatrain e f e f third quatrain and g g is the couplet whereas in spencer uh, and also in milton it was eight lines rhyming together to form an octave and six lines rhyming together to form a sestet so in miltonic sonnets it was a b b a a b b a and then c d e c d e and this is the third kind of a sonnet with the rhyme scheme of a b a b second quatrain is b c b c third quatrain is c d c d and the couplet is e e this poem the sonnet written by edmund spencer in his collection of poetry collection of poems named a morality in which he speaks about the power of love the major theme the theme of love was prevalent in the shakespearean age and this poem is an exemplification of the power of love in gentle mind this is all for today and here we end the sonnet thank you